Hello everyone, this is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 1.4, beginning proofs. What is a proof? A proof is a logical argument that shows why a statement is true or perhaps false. We will be discussing a two column format today. This is the method that we will typically use in this class. It is where you see both the mathematical steps and the justification. So in other words, each statement in the proof must have a reason. Some tips for writing the two column proof would be to list the given information, also draw the diagram and take that given information and mark it on your diagram. So in other words, you could actually put tick marks on there if you see a congruent statement or you might actually write the degree measure of an angle on there as well. You can also use the assumptions that we talked about previously in the chapter that might help you with your proof as well. And again, just like I stated on the previous slide, you must give a reason for every single statement. That's super important. Some of these reasons could be definitions, postulates, and theorems. And the order in which you write these is also extremely important. If a statement relies on a previous statement, it must come later in the proof. So a typical problem in your textbook would be to give you the given information, the proof statement, and a diagram. So you need to copy all that down again. And then your two column proof would look like a T-table. You'll have statements on the left, reasons on the right. Notice that each of those are numbered because we want to keep it neat and readable as well as we might refer to some of those numbers in our actual proof. On the left hand side with the statements, this is going to be very specific to the diagram. And on the right hand side for our reasons, these are going to be very general reasons. For example, if I'm referring to angle ABCB 90 degrees, that would be something I would write in my statement. Again, I'm referring to a specific angle ABC in the diagram. On the right hand side, I would never refer to an angle as angle ABC in the diagram, I would just simply say an angle, again, a very general term for the reasons. So specific on the left hand side towards the diagram, on the right hand side with the reasons, just very general terms. Some of the reasons, again, could be some definitions and theorems. Definitions are always reversible. Here's an example that I already have written in. A right angle is an angle that it measures 90 degrees. However, we will use the if then format when we write this in our two column proof. Theorems, these can be sometimes reversible and here's an example of that written in if then format. If a ray bisects an angle, then it divides the angle into two congruent angles. So let's go ahead and jump into our first proof. So we have our given, what we're trying to prove, and then our diagram. So let's go ahead and look at our given. So we have angle WTV equals 80 degrees. So we'll mark that on our diagram. And then we also have angle STW is 40 degrees. Again, marking that given information on your diagram. We are trying to prove the larger angle STV is obtuse. So you can see if we took the 80 degrees and the 40 degrees, that would definitely be 120 degrees, which is an obtuse angle. So it does make sense. So let's go ahead and write the proof. Notice the first two statements come directly from our givens. So the reason would simply be given for both of those. You can write that twice or if you'd like for step two, you could use the little ditto marks, which again means refer to the word below, above, sorry, and that um, is the same reason for step two. These two statements, the two given statements, lead us to step three. Again, just as we talked about earlier, if we took the 40 and the 80, we added those together, we would get that to be 120 degrees. So the reason would simply be addition. But in parentheses, we need to say, where did we get this from? Well, it comes from these two steps, one and two. So we'll put one and two in our parentheses there, referring to adding those two angles together from steps one and two. Step three leads us to step four. 
So our if portion comes from step three. Again, we're going to state this in very general terms. So instead of saying if angle STV, we would simply say if an angle. And then we're going to refer to the 120 degrees. We're, again, we're not going to be very specific in terms of 120 degrees. We need to define it in terms of being obtuse. So if an angle measures between 90 and 180 degrees. Now the then comes from what we just wrote. So for step four, so then the angle is obtuse. So in other words, all my information for my if then statement comes from the statements that I wrote previously and then just stated. So let's go on to example two. Given information, angle HJM is 20 degrees. Angle HJK is 110. Again, this can be a little difficult to mark on your diagram. One method would be to use that angle marking and simply write 110. Another method would be to simply just write 110 by that vertex J outside of the diagram. Angle OPR is a right angle. So we've marked all of our given information. We are trying to prove angle MJK is congruent to angle OPR. So again, if we take a look at this, we have our right angle, and then we can also show by subtraction that we'd get angle MJK to also be a right angle. So let's go ahead and write the steps for this. So our first two statements are given. Again, those two statements lead directly to the third statement. So that is subtraction. And again, that's based on steps one and two. Now the other way of writing this, instead of writing steps one and two, would be simply to write the degree measures by subtracting those degree measures and showing that it equals 90 degrees. Either method is appropriate. Well, that step leads us to step four. So again, our if comes from step three. So I'm going to just repeat what this says. Again, I'm going to be very general. So if an angle measures 90 degrees, and the then comes from what we're actually trying to show then that angle is a right angle, or then it is a right angle. Five is our third given. Now we're going to take a combination of four and five. These two steps lead to our last statement. Again, please notice that is always what your proof statement or your conclusion statement will always be. So again, we have to take steps four and five. This is our if, and repeat that in general. So if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Now I have a lot of things over on the left hand side. I'm trying to show you the format of actually where the if and the then statement comes from. You don't typically need to circle and highlight all that information. Um, again, I'm just trying to show you where does that if then format come from. Um, the if is always from the statement before is always from the statement before, and then the then comes from what you just stated. At this point in time, go ahead and pause the recording. Try to do problem number three. When you get done with your two column proof, go ahead and push play and let's check your answer. 
Okay, so here would be the steps for problem number three, example three. So angle A and angle B are right angles. Mark our diagram. We have those are our first two steps. Step three, angle A is congruent to angle B. Again, that if statement comes from the first two steps, the then comes from what you just wrote. So if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. I am missing one portion here on this diagram. Number two here, you should have either the ditto marks or you need to also write um, angle B is a right angle. You could write that out as well. Let's go ahead and try the last example. Given measure of angle one is 40 degrees, angle two is 50, and measure of angle three is 90 degrees, so a right angle. So we are trying to prove that angle PDX is congruent to angle QDX. So we need to show that they are either both a right angle or that they both measure 90 degrees. You have to go in one direction or the other. Since we already have angle QDX, which is also a measure of angle three, is 90 degrees, Let's go ahead and go in that same direction and show when we add um, angle one, angle two, that we'd have measure of angle PDX is also 90 degrees. So let's write our first two givens. And then our third step, again, comes directly from the first two. We would have angle, the measure of angle PDX equals 90 degrees. And again, repeating what it comes from, one and two, we're simply adding those, so we have addition, and it comes from steps one and two. Four step. Measure of angle three is equal to 90 degrees, which is our third and final given. Now please realize though that measure of angle three is also equivalent to uh, angle QDX. So we can go right to our prove statement. And again, that's going to come directly from steps three and four. So if two angles are 90 degrees, if two angles measure 90 degrees, and the then comes from what we just stated here in step five, then they are congruent. And this concludes section 1.4.